You, you ever heard of Ponzi scheme? Well, I have absolutely been on this show. It comes up quite a bit. Yeah, but did you know a guy named Ponzi did a Wall Street scam back in the day? This when it, pot, yeah, and you go. It turns out when we go back in history, you know, like Kellogg's cornflakes. You know where Kellogg came from? It's the guy that kind of created the cereals. Flake. You know, yeah. so it, all these have a name that ties to them, and uh, uh, Ponzi schemes is uh, our our guy that's in prison now did one of the biggest Bernie uh, Madoff. Yeah, yeah, and basically that that was a Ponzi. As as well, they use other people's money to keep it going there. But they've been around for a long time and been gaining frequency during COVID. And I think they've been gaining frequency in the Internet age and now the cell phone age. And I think that's a problem, in my opinion, with the robocalls. And that's why if you answer it, it's not somebody you want to hear from. You just end it. And I... I was brought up of this way, being polite, you know, I, I'm 59. I, I put my age out there. I rarely do that. You know, it's like a secret. Y'all probably think I'm older, but see, I'm younger there. Just a pup. Yeah. And sometimes people meet me and say, like, you're not what I imagine. I imagine you shorter, fatter, and bald. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, thanks a lot. I'm 6'5", felt. And good looking. So there you go. I look like and a head full of hair. Like it's ridiculous. Okay. So regarding that, I used to be polite and like, you can't hang up on somebody. I remember somebody calling me a few years ago um, from some call center. So I would just set the phone down and, uh, and let them talk when they finish or ask a question. Of course, I'm not there to answer because I put the phone down. So it was kind of like a gentle way. And then a few minutes later, I'd check it, and 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 they've hung up from that. But now, I I have no qualms about it, and you shouldn't either. If it's not who you're from, wanting to hear from, hang up. Do not sit there and listen to them because they're trying to figure out a weakness and get your money. Three of the most popular... Uh, Scams that are going on out there involve online love interests. Would you fall for that, James? An online love interest? Not now, but single James may have. Yeah. Um, lonely James could if there was a lonely James. There was a right? strong overlap in single James and lonely James. Yeah. And then what about work from home jobs? And, uh, you could see how that could be prevalent because work, working from home is a thing. Hey, I got this job for you, and, and you just got to stay home. And then the lottery or prize winnings. And I've heard stories from all of those, but consider any offers or invitations to send or receive money in these scenarios, I would think of them as suspect until thoroughly vetted. And I don't know how I would go about vetting them. Maybe you should think about that for a minute, James. The foreign lover, and I could see that. Ha I could, I get that. I could see that happens to people that are single or whatever, but, you know, and, and you don't necessarily have to be a long distance lover or somebody, you know, that you're having phone conversations with. Back in the day, it used to be ladders, you know, now you can just talk to them. And what's scary is there's a lot of uh, connections made through Facebook. From people, I have people, you know, uh, doing friend requests from all over the planet, and you know they get denied. But what? Why are they friending me? And they're they've got pretty faces and all, but why? I don't know them. Why? No, we're not going to be friends. And and it can be long distance that. They may seem wonderful, but all of a sudden, everything's going. And then they start asking for money. Like, oh, I've, I've just had a bad time. I need some money. Somebody ask you for money, it, it should be completely suspect at that time. Why are they asking you for money? They don't even know you other than you have know, had some conversations. So my suggestion, you know, even if they're saying, well, look, send me some money. 
I'm going to travel. We had a caller on the show kind of alluded to that a while back. If you, if you think back about that, he's a long distance relationship. He said, uh, he's coming into all this money, but he's got to fly them, send them some money to fly them over. But when they come over here, they're coming with a lot of money. You remember that call? Yeah. That That's sounded a that, little far fetched, didn't it? That was like, ugh. that, that was that's not going to work out well, was the thought there. So all of a sudden, they're needing money. That might be a reason. If And I'm telling you this because you're probably not having this problem, but you might come across somebody that tells you about this acquaintance, and, and they're going to send them some money to fly over, and they can't wait to meet them. You might want to say, oh, you might give that a pause. How about the uh, fake shipping scam? The easy job of repacking or forwarding packages. You're asked to pay the postage or forwarding fees out of pocket while the company then provides you a fake reimbursement or earnings check. Guess what? You're out of money. So you might want to be careful with some of these work from home opportunities, especially if they're wanting you to pay them money so that you get the job up front. Think about that. And here's one for people trying to fix their financial woes. You're informed out of nowhere. You've won prize money or a foreign lottery. All you have to do is wire some money to insure or pay the government stamp or pay the tax up front or the fee to improve your odds of winning a sweepstakes or you've already won, but we need you to go ahead and front us the handling fees and we'll get the check right out to you. You may be asked for your bank account or credit information. Don't do it. They may send you some money to get you to send them more that. So it, first off, it's illegal to participate in foreign lotteries. Second, legitimate lotteries or sweepstakes don't request your personal information and don't let somebody set up checking accounts. If they're asking you not to talk to family or friends, don't tell anybody about this. Don't let your wife know. You know, if, if, if there's any secrecy to this, run, run, run. And if you hear about somebody coming to you like, here, I, I may have won this lottery. Well, did you buy a lottery ticket down at the store? Then, then you haven't won anything. 